What's up guys, my name is Ben TK and today I'm going to be teaching you how I did that warp zoom. This video is also sponsored by Squarespace, so if you're looking for a really easy way to create a really sick website, it's got to be Squarespace. So now, let's jump into the editing. Okay, so now we're in Premiere Pro and I've got these four clips that I've chosen next to each other. One with my brother far away, one with my brother really close, and one with me far away, and one with me really close. So we're gonna warp zoom into these clips. But in order to do this warp zoom, we're gonna have to use After Effects. So I'm gonna highlight all these clips, right click, and click Replace with After Effects Composition. Now I've got all my clips in After Effects. The first thing I'm gonna do is create an adjustment layer. So I'm gonna right click, New, Adjustment Layer. And then I'm gonna go up to the Effects and Presets, type in, optics compensation and then I'm going to click and drag optics compensation onto my adjustment layer. Now the first thing we want to do is we want to find a place where we want to start the zoom and end the zoom. So first of all I'm going to go up to my effects on the adjustment layer and I'm going to hit the stopwatch on field of view and I'm going to change it so it zooms. Now as you can see it goes in the other direction. What we're going to need to do is hit reverse lens distortion. Now as you can see it started to warp in the other direction but we don't want it to start warping straight away so I'm going to hit U on the keyboard to bring down the adjustment layers properties and this keyframe that we've created I'm going to move towards the end and I'm going to create a new keyframe at zero. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the end of the clip and just make this warp a little bit more. So I'm gonna go up to the field of view and pull it to the right. And now we're getting some really crazy warping. And at the start of the next clip, I'm actually gonna keep that same distance and I'm gonna hit the keyframe and then I'm gonna bring the warp back. Uh, just type in zero up here and bring the warp back to its neutral position. Now, as you can see, the warp zoom effect is actually starting to work pretty well, but there's still some other things we need to do. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to go up to the effects and presets and type in transform. Click and drag transform onto your adjustment layer and then we're going to scale in a little bit. So we're going to go down to the scale, hit the stopwatch and then go over to the end of the first clip and then I'm going to bring the scale up. So we're actually zooming in towards Jamie, my brother, my awesome little brother. But I don't want this to start zooming in like straight away. I want it to gradually zoom in so it looks really nice and fluent. In order to make it gradually zoom in, we're gonna go over to this little graph picture here. I'm gonna click that and then it's gonna give us a line. This shows our speed of the scale going at a constant speed, but we want it to start scaling in gradually. So I'm gonna click the bottom keyframe and I'm gonna click the Easy Ease Out tool. And that's gonna make it gradually speed up. But I'm gonna pull it over a little bit more and I'm gonna do the same to the top but I'm gonna bring it down. And now it's got a nice gradual speed in with the scale. It doesn't just scale in straight away and look really rough. I'm actually gonna scale in a little bit more, so I'm gonna pull the scale up and get a little bit closer to Jamie. Now sometimes when you do add the scale, it takes a little bit of the warp out because it's cutting off the edges of the warp. So back to optics compensation, I'm gonna drag that up even more so we get more stretch. You might just have to play around with the scale and the optics compensation in order to get it to where you want to. I'm actually gonna move this down a little bit more. There's a lot of playing with this and just trying to get things right. Um, it could be tedious, but once you do it a couple of times, you'll get the hang of it and figure out how it all works. So now I've got a nice warp zoom going on here towards my brother. The next thing I need to do is go to the start of the next clip and I'm gonna zoom out. So I'm gonna go to the scale and I'm actually gonna zoom out very, very far. And then I'm gonna go towards where I want it to end and bring the scale back to normal by typing in 100. But now we need to get rid of this black. So I'm gonna to go to my effects and presets and type in motion tile. Click and drag motion tile onto the adjustment layer. Now motion tile has to be at the top of all the other effects, otherwise it won't work. Hit output height, bring that up, and output width. It duplicates your image and mirrors it and can help fill in any gaps that you need to fix. Now make sure when you use motion tile that you check mirror edges and this is gonna mirror the edges. And that's starting to look really good. But, but there's one more thing we need to do and that's ease in the scale on the last part. So I'm gonna click the graph editor again and I'm gonna come down and ease in the scale. So using the same technique we used before, clicking the keyframes and clicking the easy ease in and out tools, 
we can bring it up and have it gradually scale in and scale out. So after a bit of playing around with the graph editor, and you probably will need to play around with it a bit because it can be a bit annoying, but I've got a result that I'm pretty happy with and I'm gonna leave it at that. It looks nice and fluent, looks like water. It's good, that's what we want. Now after we've created the warp zoom and we're happy with our result, we're gonna wanna save it as a preset so we can use it again and again and not have to recreate it every single time we wanna use it. So how we do that is we go up to our effects, everything that we've just created today, and I'm gonna click and hold shift to highlight all of them, and then I'm gonna to go to animation, save animation preset. So we're gonna call it, let's call it TK's Warpy Zoomy, yeah. And then it should save up here in your effects and presets panel, so let's type in TK, and look at that, TK Warpy Zoomy. So if I just click and drag onto the adjustment layer, it's gonna create another one. So now we've got another warp zoom. But for the purpose of this, we can just copy and paste these keyframes. So I'm gonna find my next clip, I'm gonna copy these, Control C, and then come over to the next join, Control V, and then we've got our keyframes. Make sure you drag the center points over the joins of both clips. And as you can see, it's working on this one too, which is awesome, that saved us a lot of time. But as you may have noticed from the video at the start, there was a clip where it didn't zoom into the middle, it zoomed off to the side. Now I'm gonna show you how to do that. So you wanna come up here to the optics compensation and go to view center and hit the stopwatch. Press U on your keyboard to bring it back and then to bring it back up and your keyframe should be there. And now I'm just gonna to go to the end of this clip and you can either click on the field of view center here and that'll give you a little target to aim at or what you can do is you can just drag this center point over the area where you want it to warp into. So I'm just gonna aim up here somewhere and hope it works out. So I'm actually gonna put this back into the center on the next clip so it doesn't go into the middle of nowhere. So I'm gonna bring back this target and put it back into the middle. So now we've got a cool warp that actually moves from the center and off to the side. And it's almost like it's zooming into the hills up there and that's where I am in the next clip. Now to finish this effect off and make it look extra nice, we can right click, create a new adjustment layer and add some motion blur to these warp zooms. So I'm gonna type in force motion blur. Now you can either use force motion blur or you can use pixel motion blur. Either one, they look pretty good, but for this example, I'm just gonna use CC force motion blur. I'm gonna click and drag that onto my adjustment layer and I'm just gonna be really quick and shorten my adjustment layer to where I want it to blur. So it doesn't take a long time rendering other clips that don't need motion blur. This is one way you can introduce motion blur or you can set keyframes. So you can come up here, set the shutter angle to 180 and then you can set it to zero towards the start. So it starts off without any blur and gradually comes in and it's not gonna take forever to render that way. So I might even just come to the end of the clip, set another keyframe and then change it back to zero so we don't have any more motion blur after the warp. And then I'm just gonna drag this adjustment layer over the other clips and I'm gonna copy and paste these keyframes and put them over the joins. Now I'm gonna render this out and show you the final result, but before that, it's sponsor time. Building websites can be tedious and really annoying sometimes. That's where Squarespace comes in and makes the process easy. They have a ton of designer templates to choose from, so straight off the bat you can jump in, pick one you like, and start manipulating it into your own sort of style. Whether you're an inspiring filmmaker looking for somewhere to put your work to show your clients, or if you're an adventurous traveler and want somewhere to write a really cool blog, Squarespace makes it really easy to do and look really good at the same time. So head over to squarespace.com slash bentk to start your free 14-day trial and use the code bentk to get a 10% discount on launch. Looking for a place to make a really awesome website? It's got to be Squarespace. And here's the final result of what we just did today. And that is how you do the warp zoom, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope this helped you out because it's a sick effect and it can bring your videos to the next level. If you're new to this channel and you wanna see more tutorials or cinematic videos, hit subscribe. There's a whole heap of cool stuff coming very soon. My name's TK, peace out, everybody.